Hey, welcome back to another lesson on how to create Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be going over level design and how to set up your environment. Now, before we get started with our level design, there's a couple changes that we need to make to our project that I didn't mention in our previous videos. The first change is with our layers, and so with any object selected in my hierarchy, I'm going to select the Layers drop-down menu and go down to Add Layer. And you want to make sure that you have a layer for the ghosts in your scene. And so I've added in a layer called Ghost, and this is my ninth layer. Once you have this layer created, we then need to open up our player controller script. And in the die function of this script, we want to add a line of code where we're setting the layer of our current game object to our ghost layer. And so I have game object dot layer equals nine. This should make it so that the raycast that we're using to detect dead bodies will ignore the players that are already ghosts if our ignore for body layer mask is set to ghost. Another change that I've made to our project is I've taken our light mask object and made it a child to our player prefab. Next, let's look at level design and how to set up our level. Now it's fairly easy and if you already watched our lesson on how to use the 2D lighting system from the universal render pipeline, then you already got somewhat of an introduction. Now the first thing that you're going to need is your 2D art or your background image which we already have because we're just using a screenshot from the original game. But if you'd like to try something a little more interesting, or if you're creating your own original game, then you're going to need to come up with your own 2D art for the environment. But once you have your background image, the next thing that we're going to do is create an empty game object to hold all the walls for our level. So this is an empty game object, which I've called walls, and I've centered this at the origin of our scene. Then if I expand this object, you can see that it's made up of a bunch of cube objects. Now to create these cube objects, you can start with just one by right clicking on your empty game object, going down to 3D object and selecting cube. You then want to make sure that this cube object is on the same Z plane as your player object so that their colliders can interact with each other. We also want to set the tag of this object to wall. I've also set the layer of this object to wall as well. You'll then want to make sure that you leave everything else the same, that you have a mesh filter, a mesh render, and a box collider. After which, if you focus in on this object in your scene, and you switch over to a 2D view, you can then press T on the keyboard to switch to the Rect tool. This will make these blue handles appear in the corners of your cube, after which you can click and drag to reposition and scale, as well as rotate your cube objects. And so from here, you can just keep duplicating your cube and moving it to a new section of your environment, and then reposition and size that cube to fit over top any walls you have on your background. And once you've filled in all the walls of your background image, you should have something like this. But we're not quite done yet because there's still objects in our scene that our player can't walk through, but they don't cast shadows. And so now we want to take care of these objects. The best example of these objects are the tables in the cafeteria. To create these objects, I've used 3D spheres. These objects don't have a tag, but I've set their layer to the ghost layer. That way these objects won't cast a shadow and we'll be able to see dead bodies that are on the opposite side of the object. Now if you're using the universal render pipeline, then all you have to do is not add the shadow caster script to these objects. You can then reposition and resize these objects over top of each table in our cafeteria. The only problem is that a sphere collider cannot be squashed in the same way that a box collider can be. And so if you want to get the same oval shape as the cafeteria tables, then you might need to create a 3D model and then use a mesh collider instead. But for now, I've just created five sphere objects. And with each of these objects, we can also disable the mesh render component. I've then also added in a few other cube objects, one for all these crates in the storage area, as well as one for each engine in the engine rooms. Now there's probably more of these objects that you could create to better perfect your project, but for the sake of time, this will do for now. Now the last thing that you need to do if you haven't already, and before we test our project, is to add our main cameras to our player object so they'll follow our player around the scene. We can then overwrite these changes on our player prefab. But once you do that, you'll want to make sure that you disable your cameras and your light objects on all the other player prefabs in your scene. And now we can go ahead and test our project. So now I can walk around our scene and our camera follows our player. I can then run into the cafeteria table and get stopped by it, but it's not casting any shadows. And I can walk down the halls and I can walk into each room and the rooms become dark. 
when I leave them and it seems like everything is working just fine. Now that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to set up your level with the walls. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.